Absolute pleasure to see you back in Dubai. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you for having us back to our favorite show in Dubai. A pleasure to have you both in. So much to discuss in the fight game. We'll start with Let's get to work. We'll start with you, Badu. Not fought since May. Give us an exclusive. What's coming up in the next few months? Uh, I mean, they gave me a draw in the last fight, um, and it really was a win. So uh, with Adana Stevenson, he got to fight his mandatory challenger in, I think, on December 1st. So I'll fight the winner out of that fight. Excited so, for that. I mean, we were talking off air. Adonis is the man that you want to gain, right? Yeah, I mean, nothing personal. I just want that WBC belt, you know. And, um, yeah, hopefully we get that fight ne next and uh, we're going to get a stay busy fight, you know, before that. So you're going to fight Badu likely in January of 2019. Is that the plan? Yeah, I think December or January. December, January. Yep. And Adonis is, is, if he wins, of course, that yeah. mandatory challenger fight, he's the, he's the logical rematch. I mean, how, how frustrating, first of all, since we saw you last, uh, the fight in May, was it to, to be given that result? I mean, I believe I did enough to win the fight. And, you know, it was in his backyard, but I still thought I won the fight. I heard him. Um, I was landing more punches. And, yeah, I mean, that's how you win a fight. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the judges, one judge had me winning, two had it even. So, I mean, nobody had him winning. Mm. Mm. Amar, what about you? It's been a big, big few days, a big week or so for you. And I will come back to Baru, but yourself announcing over the past couple of days, you're done in the kickboxing world. 41 years of age now. He doesn't look it, does he? He looks younger you. than me, but you're done. <laughs> Reasoning for that? You know, it wasn't a decision that I woke up and I said, I have to retire. It's been, you know, brewing, culminating over, you know, probably almost a year now. Um, you know, in all honesty, we actually tried to do a re another uh, a fight, another training camp, and a couple of weeks into pre-camp, I just... I didn't feel it. And, I, and I, I, you know, every fight that I go into, I have to make sure that I'm 100% prepared. I mean, physically, you know, with the physical preparation that comes during camp, but emotionally, mentally, spiritually, it just wasn't jiving. And, and I had to make a decision that, uh, and it wasn't an easy decision, but I had to make a decision that, you know, I can't disrespect the sport. I can't disrespect my career. You know, everybody that's around me, you know, when we fight, even though it's an individual performance, it's a team that's represented. So, um, I just said, man, that's enough. You know, 41 years old, I have, you know, I li I'll live now vicariously through Badu, through some of the other guys that we, uh, you know, that we're working with and, uh, and now just shift all my focus there. Plus, you know, at 41 years old, it'll take me three months with a pre-camp that I have to put, take out of my life. I mean, financially, I would take a huge hit in that. Uh, Time-wise, I would take away from all the projects that we have going now. And, you know, we were talking about everything that we're, that we're doing now with Badu Jack, Ripper Nutrition, Badu Jack Foundation. Um, we've got a couple other projects also that are brewing, so it's, it's the right time. Timing is everything, right? And the, the right time at the right decision is the correct decision, so that's what we have to do. Floyd Mayweather made the most money because people wanted to see him lose. Yes. Because his trash talking and the way that he, he maneuvered himself and positioned himself enabled people, you know, in the ring, in, in the beginning of his career, you know, he was, a, he was a knockout puncher, but towards the end of his career, you know, once he had the, a little bit more injuries with his hands and whatnot, he became more of a finesse boxer and just, so it was very difficult for people to, fight fans to relate to that. So what attracted them was the trash talk. There, it, trash talk is important. It sells, but there is a limit. Yeah. And, and Habib showed us that with those guys, there is a huge, it's a very bold red line. And once you cross it, they're gonna pay. I said this, and, and I'll end with this. Connor and his team attacked Habib. Habib attacked all of Connor's team. Right? He went out single-handedly because that's what they stand for. It's one thing to hype it up and it's another thing to overstep your boundaries. You've mentioned there Floyd Mayweather, the master, if you will, of the trash talk because he knows the limits. He knows there's a line and he pushes it sometimes, never crosses it. A lot of talk in recent days that Habib could step into the boxing realm and fight Floyd Mayweather. I've got my own thoughts on this. I'm keen to get yours. Badu, you're smiling, you're laughing. Badu doesn't want to comment on this. I think I know where we're going with this. A farce? Is, is, that, is that overstepping the mark from a sporting point of view? Habib taking on Floyd? I mean, he's my promoter and everything, but you know, Khabib is not a stand-up fighter. No. And, but whatever makes money, you know, so I support him with that. If he if if it generates money, why not? He only ha uh, you know cement his legacy already. Generate money is that where we're at in the fight game? Okay, I mean let's be candid, right? These guys, Badu gets legitimate injuries when he's training. You know his hands, his his 
his arms, his legs. You know, when you're training and you get the you get you get concussed sometimes, you know, from excessive sparring. Thank God, I mean, he hasn't had that, but he he's he's prone to that. For what? Hmm. To give his family and himself a great lifestyle, to secure his family's uh, uh, lifestyle of eating, living, vacations, you know, just, just a comfortable lifestyle. But that is directly from a financial and a, a revenue stream basis. So it is about money. Mm. Of course it is. If, if, if we right now we were to ask Badu Jack, Badu, did you fight simply for the glory and you want to be poor for the rest of your life? I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I can guarantee you I know what the answer is. <laughs> yeah, prize fighter, right? Of course. Yeah. So how can you hate Floyd when he comes up with this farce as you used or circus, which a lot of people Frank use? Einstein. Whatever, right? How can you be mad at him when he made the most money in his career from the least risk in his career? It's brilliant. How do you stay hungry, Badu? Because you've come up, you know, most fighters get into the game and they are, it's almost a desperate will to win, isn't it? It's something that drives you, something that from inside you, you gain success, you get money, you get a lifestyle that, that softens you, surely. I mean, we, we've spoken about it, you know, the effect it has to have had on Conor McGregor, earning 100 million from the Mayweather fight. How do you stay so ferocious that when you get in the gym, you're able to hit that level of performance that enables you to win? It's the hunger to, like I said before, to be the best. But also, you know, you can't forget where you came from. And, uh, you know, I'm not all about flashing money and doing this and that. I just want to take care of my family and, and you know, good, do good things outside of boxing. So, I mean, I'm still hungry. If I lose that hunger of training and fighting, then I might hang, hang up my gloves. But right now, I'm st I still got that hunger. I still got a lot left to give. And, you know, sky's the limit. You talk about there, Amar, and coming back to it, the fact that for all every fighter, it's about making money. It's about securing your long-term future for yourself as you get older and you pass through the boxing oh. world, also for your family. What needs to be done, though? Because uh, there will be naysayers out there that say, well, that's all good and well, but people like Badu, young fighters yeah. who are coming up, if their chances of getting to Floyd are blocked because Floyd wants to go and make money against a Habib, what, what message is that sending to young boxers? Listen, Floyd revolutionized the way that boxers think today. And obviously in, in, a, in a very positive way of, of, of showing and exposing how much money is available, but also in a very negative side where now fighters feel entitled. Well, Floyd makes this, well, Floyd, stop. Anytime somebody says that. You know, in Floyd's gym, guys will box like Floyd. You're not Floyd. That shoulder roll doesn't work for you. That lifestyle, they'll pull their socks up the way that Floyd does. They'll tuck their shirt in the way Floyd does. He has really set a precedence of, you know, uh, almost a style of how people should follow. And in the business sense, they say the same thing. Well, you know, I should be making this much because Floyd makes this much. Well, he made three. What? You're not Floyd, right? So, but also Floyd started this when? When you look at Floyd's opponents, and I, listen, there's three things I never argue about. Religion, politics, and Floyd Mayweather. Those are three things that you will always <laughs> never agree on with anybody, right? I say, look at Floyd's resume. He's fought everybody, and he's legitimately beat everybody. Regardless if you like him or don't like him on a personal level, agree or disagree, you know, his lifestyle, whatnot, his resume speaks for itself. And then you'll have people that always say, well, he fought this guy on the back end, uh, when the different weights, different thing. He fought Canelo when he was young. Right, but when he was fought Canelo, you thought he was going to get knocked out. When he fought De La Hoya, you thought he was going to lose. When he fought Pacquiao, he said, finally, the chicken is caught up. For seven years, Floyd has been called a coward and a chicken avoiding Manny Pacquiao. And when the truth surfaced and they fought, you saw who the better man is. It wasn't even close. Mm. When he fought Canelo, it wasn't even close. De La Hoya, obviously, was close. You know, Floyd was coming up also, but it was, it, he won the fight. Floyd now, at the end of his career, his last two fights, and when I say two, I mean if Habib fight happens, Habib and Connor should not overshadow everything that he's done in the previous 20 years of his career. Here's the question, will Floyd, Floyd fight again, do you feel? Uh, myself? Yeah. Um, What's your hunch? A I know, I know a little every time from Badu, <laughs> 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 if he knows I something. Is do. This is, uh, the Habib fight will be an easier fight than the Connor McGregor fight. Let me tell you why the Habib fight happened. In the third round when Habib dropped Connor, the MMA fans said, shit, Connor guy. Can we swear on the show? Yeah. Go Great. For it. <laughs> Love it. We'll edit out. We'll edit mm -hmm. out. You can just put like one of those censor things on. <laughs> when, when Connor got dropped, they said, Habib did something that Floyd couldn't do. Yeah. And it was so funny. One of those boxing sites Different said, gloves. Just, 
well, of course it's different gloves, but more important, it's a different guy. It's a different, the whole dynamic is different. Yeah. Um, but that landed the fight. To answer the question shortly, I do think Floyd's going to fight again. Okay. I do. And Pacquiao signing with Al Heyman, I thought that was interesting because in, in many ways now, Pacquiao and Floyd are under the same, um, well, they are under the same umbrella. Do, do you feel that that fight, is there a rematch that Floyd would be interested in having? If he can make nine figures from the Habib fight, would he want to fight Manny again? If the money's right, if the money's there, I think I think it could happen. So okay. uh, I mean, it's all about the money right now. He, he's done, uh, you know, everything in his boxing career right now, is to you know steal some money. So yeah, if it's the Conor rematch, Khabib or Pacquiao, if the money's there, I think I think he'll fight again. I don't think he'd fight Pacquiao. You don't? No, I think it's too high of risk. For not enough reward, I think the Habib fight is a much more lucrative fight and a much less risk. That's where the oh, fight is. Definitely more yeah. less risk.